Hello, I'm Tom Moore, founder of the Bartizzo Lab. And one of the things I get asked very, very often is how do you use a razor blade? Now, using a razor blade in a combative purpose is something that someone training in Bartizzo in the 1800s would have had to be cognizant of because it's a relatively common item for most men of a certain age to be carrying around with them. Um, and near do wells, they'll use it as a weapon. So let's look at the anatomy of the razor blade, how it may have been used and how we use it in training in the Bartizzo Lab. There are very, very scarce accounts of them being used. Well, there are lots of accounts of them being used as a criminal weapon, but in terms of training manuals and treaties, there are none. So with much of this, you need to look and explore the weapon. Look at the properties of the weapon, look at the properties of the other arts, look at knife fighting, and again, draw your own conclusions. And these conclusions are my own. So first, the anatomy of the razor blade. You've got a long, light handle here, often hollow. You've got the shaft of the razor blade, and you've got the blade of the razor blade. Typically, they have a slightly thicker back. And here, you've got a spur-like item here. Okay, now, when it comes to using the razor blades, uh, we look at two grips in the Bartizzo Lab. The first is the pinch grip. So, towards the higher end of the shaft, where the bladed item is, we essentially pinch it between our thumb and our finger, wrap the fingers around for surety, and then run the thumb along the thick back edge here. And again, this gives me really good blade control. And blade control is really important when using a razor blade because they are brittle items. They lose their sharpness very, very quickly. So again, I can't use these for sustained assaults against a person because in reality, this will blunt very fast, even against a human, let alone against jackets, against chairs, against clothing, against all manner of things. So for this, it's a weapon of surprise. Or when it's not used in surprise, we need to use it infrequently and with really good accuracy and targeting. So accuracy is really important for the razor blade. So first of these things is the pinch grip. You pinch it between your thumb and your finger. After you've done that, you run thumb along the edge, holding it high. You don't want to hold the handle because it will give here so it won't cut. If you hold it too low on the shaft here, it will cut, but it will give. So again, it won't have the slicing effect that you want it to. So holding it just before the razor element is really, really important. Again, and with our stances in the Bartitsu lab, we teach that most of the time with a blunt weapon, especially a short blunt weapon, the hand with the weapon, the weapon itself, and the, the power foot is back. So the unarmed hand and the unarmed leg is forward, like so. So again, I can knock things out of the way and hit you with the truncheon. Now I can hit you in a way that clears out obstacles, clears your hand out of the way, clears your weapon out of the way. Because with a blunt weapon, if I hold it forward and you grab it, it's now our weapon. With a sharp weapon, such as a knife or a razor, I can take the liberty to have my weapon hand and my power leg forward because any grabs towards this weapon can be dealt with in a short, sharp manner. I can cut up a hand that wants to grab this. So again, it disincentivizes the person from trying to grab the weapon because I can immediately cause damage from a very short range. So again, power hand, power leg forward with the razor, holding our hand in support and keeping the opponent on edge, on point. So putting the edge towards the target of the opponent we want to hit. So if I'm facing my opponent, I'm probably gonna aim this towards your jugular. If you move your head, I'm gonna follow you. A bit like I've got a gun. I'm gonna follow you around with this particular weapon. Okay, so we've got the pinch grip. Thumb along the back, holding it here, good edge control, front hand forward. You've also got a technique where you fold the razor back on itself, put your hand here and put your thumb here. So you've got a loaded fist. Now, I'm not massively keen on this approach, but it does work. And I can hit a bob dummy, something with decent resistance, pretty hard with this without causing myself too much mischief. Now, obviously with this, we're much closer range. You know, you could do a full length punch with it, but if I'm going to do that, I might as well have done that. So with this, we look at it a bit more defensively in that I might block an incoming punch and slice up the inside of the arm. I might grab a hand which is latched onto me and slice up inside the wrist. So again, I see this much more counter grappling with very close range. And much of this is about slicing. Okay, so you've seen we've got the pinch grip and what I call the duster grip. So holding it much like a knuckle duster here. Okay, let's talk about the anatomy of using this particular weapon. I break down the strikes or the cuts with the razor blade as follows. So we've got slashes. And with a razor blade, typically we're aiming for the eyes, we're aiming for the artery, the windpipe, or the inside of the wrists. Soft, 
veiny targets that will cause some serious damage like so we've got our weapon here now we've got our diagonal strikes and again in the Bartizza lab we teach you that the diagonal strike comes out like a thrust and cuts at the last second so thrust for thrust cut at the last second and then making sure that we don't drop the hand too low so if I do a distance here and it cycles back here and it cycles back I don't want to drop the hand too low because I invite a counter so nice and fast inside nice and fast okay forehand blows are typically the most effective with the razor because I can get best edge control so forehand diagonal blows backhand diagonal blows also count and much the same I don't want to extend it past my body so I thrust I cut and I return without the arm leaving the radius of my body okay nice and nice and simple you do have horizontal cuts as well but I find these much harder to control and you find when I practice targeting with these you can get pretty poor edge alignment they're harder to manage across but again much the same as in the Bartizza lab we do thrust 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 thrust, thrust cut thrust 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 cut with the horizontals we do much the same we incline our body a little bit it's almost like a jab and at the last minute it cuts across so as you can see here it's a small slicing approach but again my arm doesn't leave the confines of my shoulders and back and back okay and i can do it in a forehand way and back so at speed forehand diagonal and i'll slow that down backhand diagonal forehand horizontal backhand horizontal okay so those are your cuts then you've got your slices now a slice is a bit different from a cut because we run it for a long period against the opponent